Okay, welcome to my latest video. This is um, how to use EvoCalc, EvoCalc.com, uh, to improve your combat in the game of Ebony. Um, that is the, the link for this is going to be right here, EvoCalc.com. That stands for Ebony Calculator. For those of you who are a little slower, keep those helmets on, people. Um, I have a computer opened up over here with Ebony with EvoCalc on it because it's a lot easier for me to explain what I'm seeing when I do this. I also don't know how to do screen captures that go into this, and if you know, please don't tell me because I don't care. Because um, I'm not going to integrate that into my limited technological knowledge. So, we've all used, or most of us have used, and then very disappointed with the little calculator thing that's in the rally point. Um, because it lies to you, and we all know that it lies. If you don't know that it lies, it lies. Uh, this is a much better version of that because it takes into account technology and um, heroes. So you go in here, you type, and you scroll down past the uh, the ads at the top, click on them to make it free forever. Uh, of course, I'm not connected to these people in any way. I'm not going to get money from telling you how to do this, but we know how this works. Everything's ad-based nowadays. Uh, you're going to see, um, on the far left, you're going to see two columns. One says attacker, one says defender. Uh, and then it's going to have a list of all the troops that you can send on attack, from worker all the way to catapult. Next to that is defender, it's going to have from worker all the way to catapult, and then wall defenses. It has a number slot for Archer's Tower, just like the rest of your troops, and then it has check marks for traps, abatis, rolling logs, and defensive trebuchets. Um, if those are at the place you're attacking, or if you have them, you click them. If you have Archer's Towers, or they have Archer's Towers, you put that in. Obviously, this works well for defense and for attack. So if you're getting attacked, you put in your information, you put in the attacker's information, you know what you can survive. If you're attacking, vice versa, you know what you can kill. Um, it's very important to have a, an accurate scout report. So you want to have a lot of scouts, a high intelligence uh, hero, and you want to have uh, high informatics. Obviously you want to go 10 on informatics, uh, as high as possible on the intelligence hero with his intelligence or her intelligence, and you want to have at least 100,000 scouts if you can send out 100,000 troops. If you only have a level 9 rally point and 90,000 scouts. We should have a lot more than that anyway to defend against scouting. So get it, send the stuff out, get a scout report. If you can't do it, get someone in your alliance to scout them for you, okay? Because what you need to have to make this really work is troops defending the city and the technologies of the city. It's nice to have the hero information as well because there's a spot for you to put the hero attack in. That is the attack attribute of the hero, not the level of the hero. So if it's a level 97 with an attack of 160, you know, making a base of 63, uh, quick math, uh, you're going to not put in 97, you're not going to put in 63, you're going to put in 160, the actual attack attribute. Um, so you're going to put in all of the attacking troops for each spot, worker, zero, warrior, 40,000, scout, zero, pikeman, zero, whatever you're going to send, you know, all the way down. Defender, you put in everything that's there, if his walls are open. If his walls are not open, if you know for a fact that his walls aren't open and he's not online, he's you know he's he's ripe for just hitting once, plundering, taking all of his stuff. Don't put anything in there because this is going to factor it in as though all the troops were fighting. You just put his wall defenses in then. If you want to see, you can do it twice. Do it once without any of the troops, and you can see what happens if he hits his walls. And then you do it once again. You put all the troops in and the walls, and you see what'll happen if he happens to open his his gates at the last second. If you were maybe following my getting attack video, uh, which is always something you should check. Um, so you got all that information. Then the next two columns are attacker and defender again, and these are technologies. There is hero attack level, where you put your not level, but attribute of your attacking hero and the defending hero, or your defending hero and his attack. Remember that on defense, the highest attack hero in the city at the time who is not mayor does the defenses. Then you're going to put in, there's spots for it, military tradition, ironworking, compass, horseback riding, archery, medicine, and then on defense you also add in engineering and walls. Uh, for those of you who don't know and don't do it, it drives me completely insane when I see people who are on my side that have an engineering that's really low. And it makes me really happy when I see people that I'm trying to kill that have an engineering that's really low. Engineering helps with um, wall defense. Helps with, makes your walls stronger. To play around with this, go to this link here on Ebonypedia. It's a wall calculator. Um, and you'll see, just adjust the, uh, the engineering level and you'll see what happens. Alright, it's really cool. So. 
you're going to put in the military tradition, yada, 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 for yourself, and then for them, and it's going to factor everything in, do all the math, all the fun stuff. That's, this is sign language for math, I guess. For those of you who actually use sign language, I'm terribly sorry for butchering your language. Um, you're going to put all the information in. Once you got everything, there's a button at the top and a button at the bottom, and they both are the exact same thing. It's called move and attack. It means calculate. So you're going to clack, click, clack, whatever. It's going to churn out information. What's going to happen is next to the number that you entered for whatever troop type, there's going to be another number that pops up. That's the number of those troops that die in the attack. So you can instantly see if the attacker has troops left, he wins. If the defender has troops left, he wins. Um, so then you'll know. Um, then scroll to the top. There will be a new thing that has been added in. Let me move mine so that uh, I can tell you what I see. Um, this is the Troop Movement Simulator. This is really cool. It actually tells you who gets to what, where, who does what fighting when, that kind of stuff. You're going to see a round box. It's not a round box. It says round inside of it, and it's a box. And then next to that will be a whole bunch of boxes filled with numbers. Zero through however many numbers there is, up to 100. That is the, uh, um, the number of rounds it took the attack to take place. Remember, any attack that goes to 100 rounds, the attackers automatically lose. Period. Even if they don't lose all their troops, they'll lose the attack, which is why you can't take a city with just scouts, because they can never breach walls. Um, in those numbers, some of them will have asterisks next to them. That's a funny word to say. Um, those are the rounds where troops actually do battle. Below that, you'll see this really cool box with a bunch of colored lines coming out of blue on one side, orange on the other, orange is brown, whatever. Uh, those represent specific types of troops their movement, their attack range, and how they come together, like this, in the battle. Below it will say attackers, defenders, and what you do is you mouse your number, your mouse your little cursor over each number. You don't have to click on it. In fact, I don't even know what happens if you do. I don't know. Nothing seems to happen if you do. Um, what happens is, though, at the bottom of each one, the information changes, and it tells you on attackers and defenders side what troops killed what that round and what troops died to what, I guess, you know. And you can even see who moves fastest. And you can go, oh look, my archers move a lot faster than I thought they did, or my workers don't get involved in the battle, why did I send them along? Um, this information is useful so that you know what's pointless to send in a battle and what's not. You can see how a rainbow works. You can see why sending a meat shield along works. All of these fun things. There's a fun word for you, meat shield. Um, so play with it. Put the information in. Spend some time fiddling around going, oh, what happens if I did this? What happens if I did that? You can actually put in your defense information, and you can see what kind of attacks you can survive. It's kind of fun. Uh, if you log in with any type of Gmail login account information, it will store your technology information, so you don't have to enter it in all the time. It's not like it's a big deal, but still, it's kind of cool. It knows who you are. Uh, I know plenty of people who, uh, who use this, and when they do, um, you know, they, they win. So, I mean, if you do thus, it will, it will happen, you know, use this information. I, I just, I can't tell, I can't believe how many people don't use this information. You can tell when someone does too, because they always win. Uh, it'll also tell you that you, no point even sending the battle in the first place because you're not going to ever win. So, you know, use the information to your leisure and uh, have a great day. This is DJ Tiny Tim, signing out.